The next tab is a syllabus tab, and it's incredibly important. A syllabus is your lifeline for a course. It is a legally binding document, and so whatever is stated in the course syllabus is what should be followed. Um, I would recommend printing this for yourself so that you have a copy of it. Uh, it is electronic, and I could change it mid-semester, and you want to make sure that you know what the requirements were on the beginning, uh, the first day of the class, as opposed to the last. Uh, for that reason, I've included the electronic syllabus, but if you scroll to the bottom, of where the syllabus ends, keep going down here, I have included a Microsoft Word document and a PDF and so I'd recommend printing a hard copy for your records. The syllabus will outline things like um, how to contact your instructor and any office hours he or she may have. The one you're seeing right now is specific to me, Jessica, but if you're taking you know Joe or John or Mary, whoever's teaching the class, you would want to make sure that you write down their contact information. Whatever information your teacher provides on the syllabus is how they want you to contact them. And for some reason at Salt Lake Community College we get three or four different emails and, and it's hard to keep track of all the different emails that we get. And so if your teacher is saying that I want you to email me through my Bruin Mail email, that's where he or she wants you to contact them. So make sure that if you have to send an email, you do it via the email address listed on the course syllabus. If you were in my class, Jessica, um, I would prefer that you either email me directly through Canvas because I've that forwarded to my Bruin Mail or directly through um, directly to my Bruin Mail email address, which is jcurran5 at bruinmail.slcc.edu. You can read through the syllabus. This is one of those things where I think you have the ability to read, so I'm just going to point out a couple free thing, uh, a couple important things. First, there is a textbook required for this class. At some point we might make it recommended, but at the time of recording this video it is still required. However, it's available for free through the SLCC eLibrary and something called Safari Books Online. And so before you buy the text, access it for free through the course. Literally, it's in the course. When, when it's time to read chapter one, there will be a link that says read chapter one, and when you click on it, it will open the book. Um, if you find that you don't like the e-text, then go ahead and buy the book but um, I would give the e-text a shot first. The book's not that expensive though. They haven't come out with a new one since 2015. We really like it, so we don't want to change the text. Um, so the prices are going down. You can get them on Amazon. You can get used ones on our bookstore. Brand new, the book is $40. And so I think you can get it for probably $20 or less at this point. Okay. The course requirements are broken down into modules. And so instead of having course requirements, that say that your exams are worth a certain amount and your um, homework is worth a certain amount, we break the grade down by module and so the modules are weighted. And so if you look at this, you'll see that modules one and two are worth less percentage points than modules three, four, five, and six. That's not because we randomly chose that, it's because we're covering more important things during modules three, four, five, and six and you're gonna do more. And so the modules are all kind of the same, um, weight in comparison to the workload, but modules 3, 4, 5, and 6 have a, have a greater workload than modules 1 and 2, and so they count for more. The grading scale for ART 1280 is posted here. You need a 93 or higher to get an A, which is, is somewhat higher for people who are used to getting a 90 or higher, um, but, but the course is skills-based, and it is very easy to get 100% on everything that you submit as long as you follow the directions and you complete everything thoroughly. And so it's it's not difficult to get that 93% as long as you, you participate and you submit all of your coursework. In addition, uh, we drop the lowest score in certain grading categories and so you don't have to worry too much about having one bad test or one bad quiz um, because it will be dropped. There is a late policy in ART 1280, and, is, and it is that all work is expected be, to be turned in on time. Um, I don't want late work. You don't want to submit late work. It just makes you fall further and further behind. However, I know things happen, and um, it's my experience, especially in the Photoshop class, that if we tell people that we don't accept late work, it just further hinders your work down the line. So maybe you don't do so well in module three and you don't meet the deadlines and then you try to do module four but you can't because you haven't learned the things in module three. Um, we don't want you to be in that situation and so our late policy I think is pretty generous. Um, anything that's late will be docked 10 percent of the total value of the assignment. So if the assignment is worth 30 points and you submit it late 
the highest score you can earn is a 27. Um, but you can do that all semester. So you can submit late through the end of the semester. I wouldn't recommend it, um, but, but it's there if you need it. In addition, um, you can resubmit all of your projects. There are 11 projects in this class. If you get a 15 out of 30 on your project, the idea is not for you to have a 50%, but it's for you to know what's not right and, and give you the opportunity to go and fix it. And so you can always resubmit those projects. Now, if you never turned it in to begin with, it's late and it'll be docked late. But if you got it in on time and you clearly put effort into it, you didn't just submit like an empty file or something like that, you can keep resubmitting until you get a perfect score on your projects. The Visual Art and Design Department has a very strict attendance policy, so you should download and read that. We are asked to adhere to that. For online classes, this doesn't apply because you don't attend class. But for on-campus classes, if you miss more than 20% of the course, we are not supposed to pass you. And so uh, it's broken down. Go ahead, download the document. It's broken down by how many days a week your class meets and that kind of thing. Um, but for the most part, these studio classes that are five hours um, a week, if you're not there, you can't learn and you can't get better from from not getting feedback from your peers and from your teacher, and so that's why we have that policy. You can read through the course objectives. You can read through, so the course objectives are kind of broad and, and greater sweeping than, um, than I would like, and so I've also added module objectives, and so the course is broken down into six modules. The modules are, um, they're broken down by chapter, and so when you get to them, um, which I'll do in the next video, you'll see that Although module two looks like there's a lot of objectives, um, it's broken down for five chapters. And so there's a small chunk per chapter that you're covering. Um, these are the details. These are the, the things that we're going to cover on a day in and day out basis. And then after completing all of these objectives for modules, uh, well, module one is a getting started module, so there's no objectives. But modules two, three, four, five, and six, you'll see all of them listed. After we do that, you should thoroughly be able to say that you definitely covered these five broad uh, course overall course objectives. Okay, there's only a couple other things that I want to cover, and I know this video is getting long, so I'll try to wrap it up. Uh, we will use Canvas for this course. School closing information. If the college is closed for whatever reason, your class on campus is canceled. Um, it is up to your teacher how they're going to decide if you should be doing coursework or not. My policy, Jessica's policy, is that online classes can still work, so you'll still be working on campus. Um, I will not email you and say, because we're not meeting, because the school is closed, I would like you to do X, Y, and Z. Um, so whatever I last left you with is what you should be working on. Um, the ADA statement is very important, and so um, I don't want to skim it by any means, so make sure that you read through it. If you are someone with a disability or you think that you might have a learning disability, it couldn't hurt to contact the DRC and see if there's some accommodations that can be made for you. A lot of students don't want to contact the DRC because they view it as weakness or, or um, a crutch or something like that, but it's not. It's a way to even the playing field. Um, one of my friends from college is like literally the smartest person I've ever met. She would panic on tests and she wouldn't do very well. And she just couldn't do well because she was in a room with people who might have been tapping their foot or there might have been people walking down the hallway and she would get distracted and then she would panic because she feels like she wasn't going to finish the exam. She went and she got um, classified at the DRC for needing um, non-distractive learning or something like that and then she just took her exams at the DRC location and then she took her grades that weren't so great and turned them around and got all A's and now she works as a physician's assistant. And so do not be afraid to contact the DRC, even if you're just asking. Even if you say to yourself, you know, I think that sometimes I have difficulties with X, Y, and Z, give them a call and see if it's something they can help with. Okay, academic honesty. I don't like cheating, and I will fail you for cheating. And I know that sounds blunt. It's the meanest that I will ever be. But there is absolutely no reason to cheat in my class. I let you redo things. I let you correct things. If you cheat for any reason whatsoever and you are caught, and I can prove that you are caught cheating, I will fail you, not for that assignment, but I will fail you for the entire semester. Um, the last thing that I'm going to talk about in this video is testing out of Art 1280. In a lot of the visual art and design computer graphics courses, students want to test out of, of class. Photoshop is probably the number one class that people say that they want to test out of. 
we don't offer test outs because you don't get credit in the art department for testing out of a class and we think it's misleading. So a student would say, well, I'm going to test out of art 1280 so I don't have to take it. We would test you out of it, but then you still have to take a Photoshop class or you still have to take a class to make up those credits. And so you don't get credit for testing out of a class, so we don't allow the test out. But what we do do is we allow you to test into a class that requires that as a prerequisite. And so since this is Photoshop, um, Photoshop is a prerequisite, let's say, for Photoshop for photographers. And so if you wanted to take Photoshop for photographers, but you don't want to take Art 1280 because you feel that after reading through all of these learning objectives that you've already mastered them and you'll be bored in the class, you can approach the instructor teaching the Photoshop for Photographers class. Where did I leave off here? Uh, the Photoshop for Photographers class and you can ask him or her if you can test into their class. Now the, the receiving class, the teacher doesn't get to decide that. It's whoever is called the course steward of the course but that's not your responsibility to figure out. Go talk to the teacher, the teacher will talk to the appropriate person, and then they will decide if you're allowed to test into the advanced course. Okay, then just one more thing that's of importance. The course summary will outline everything that's due um, during the entire semester, and so it's a really good way to make sure that you don't miss anything that's due. But please do not use the syllabus to navigate the course. If you click on the syllabus and you scroll down to the bottom and you start clicking on the activities, these are only activities that are worth points that have due dates. And so you'll be told to submit the Chapter 8 knowledge test, but it doesn't give you any information on where to go read Chapter 8 or what lecture to watch before you take that test. And so if you're looking at this as your sole source for the course navigation, you're going to get confused really fast.